Hey Data Junkies, welcome back. We're continuing our fantastic voyage into multiple linear regression, and now we're on topic video 7, Effect Size and Power. Congratulations, this shouldn't be a hard one for you because we've been talking about effect size and power in the context of many of the other statistical tests that we've been doing almost since the beginning. So there's a few new things to learn here, but not too much as we crouch it into what we already know. Now let's go ahead and take a look at effect size and power. And when we're looking more specifically at effect size, this new one is Cohen's F squared. You've already had things like Cohen's G, I'm well, sorry, Hedges G, but Cohen's D, Hedges H, and whatnot. Now we've got Cohen's F squared. And Cohen's F squared is the effect of all of your independent variables as they affect your dependent variable. You can use this in simple regression, you can use this in multiple regression. And the formula for it is pretty straightforward. It is your r squared value divided by 1 minus r squared. Not so bad, huh? And if we apply our french fry size to it, those scientific french fries, we have the classic small, medium, and large. Now, r squared itself can be meaningful at small values, especially when you're talking about things in the complex world of social human society and things of natural orders. Things that tend to be more uh, mechanically oriented and engineered can usually have uh, higher R squares before they become meaningful, but in the social complex worlds, small R squares can still be meaningful here. So the same thing's going to follow true when we took to, to Cohen's F squared. So a small effect can be meaningful at 0.02, a medium effect at 0.15, and a large effect at 0.35. And let's go ahead and compare how might we look at different values of R squared to generate different F squareds? Well, an R squared of 0.05 is going to run through the formula and come out with an F squared of 0.053. An R squared of 0.15 is going to generate an F squared of 0.176. The first one was small, this next one is medium. The next two are both going to be large. An R squared of 0.25 that's right, 0.25, 25%, only a quarter of variation explained, is still quite a bit because an F squared value of that is 0.3 repeating, which is almost at that cusp for being large. An R squared of 0.35, 35% of variation explained, corresponds to an F squared of 0.538, which is a, a nice sizable effect size there, and it keeps on going up. They can get quite large when you're getting larger and larger effects. Let's go ahead and change gears into power. When we're doing power, we're going to put it into R. And here we're going to use the power library, PWR. And the function inside that is going to be pwr.f2.test. And that particular function, like most power analyses in uh, R, is going to have a series of arguments, and you specify all of them but one. In this case, there are five arguments, so you can specify four. And the function is going to give you the fifth one as a result for you. So here are the five arguments are the number of independent variables, as u. v is equal to the degrees of freedom. And just to kind of recap, you can get the degrees of freedom from your r output, or you can also calculate it by hand as n being your sample size, minus 1 for your model, and minus 1 for every independent variable in your model. F2, the effect size value we just calculated. Your sig level, which is your alpha level, and the power, the desired power you want to find in your analysis, or use to determine another particular feature. So using just the example we had from a few previous lecture videos here. I have a screenshot from the FIFA data set where we were predicting a footballer's rating by using their age, ball control ability, level of aggression, and vision. And so we have four independent variables. We have a degree of freedom equal to 17,538. And in this case, I happen to be using a very small alpha of 0.001 because the sample size was so large, I felt confident in pushing it down. And my R squared is pretty much the same. Whether I look at the multiple or the adjusted, it's almost identical. So at this point, when I'm rounding it to 0.42, it's not going to matter either way which one I technically am pulling it from. But we also need that fifth value. We need the R squared. So I'm going to use that, I'm sorry, F squared. So I'm going to use R squared to help calculate F squared, and that's going to come up with an 
f squared effect size of 0 0.724, which is huge, right? Yeah. So plugging those five values into the power dot pwr dot f2 dot test, I have my four independent variables as u. V is equal to 17,538. Sig level is equal to 0 0.001. My F2 value is 0 0.724. And my power is set to null because I want to know what the power of the test was. And when I run that, it tells me that my power is equal to 1. Now, don't believe that it's equal to 1. Sometimes R tells you that powers are 1 and P values are 0 or 1, depending if it's really bad. And that doesn't mean that it's actually 0 or 1. That just means that the values are so close to those that it's just rounding. So in this case, the actual power is 0 0.999999 something so much that R just says, you know what, it's just a 1. Uh, so make sure you keep that in mind when you interpret these things. But let's go ahead and, you know, that was kind of a little unrealistic because the power is so extreme. So let's maybe bridge it down a little bit and take into an example that might be near and dear to some of the things that we might actually be studying. So we can ask 100 fans about their opinions of the rise of these new streaming TV types of services and how each one is developing its little own kingdom, its fiefdom, its turf. And you have to subscribe to each one in order to access some of the content across those platforms. Some of these companies might be groups like Netflix, Hulu, CBS All Access, HBO Now, and an up-and-coming one on Disney+. Plus. Now, these respondents had answered on how much they thought of this with a the thermometer scale, where it could go any number from 0 to 100, where 0 means that they hate it and 100 means that they love it. And in addition to getting their opinion about these streaming services uh, as their own little mini-kingdoms, we're also collecting information about the number of hours per week they spend watching TV, their age, their gender, their employment status, and the number of subscription-based video services they currently have. Now, I could take all of those and put them into a simulated little regression model that I have up here for you, and that's going to generate things like my degrees of freedom and my R squared and whatnot that I can use. And in this particular case, I have 94 degrees of freedom. My multiple R squared was about 0.23, but my adjusted penalized that fact of having so many variables there in the model, so it's only about a 0.18. And so I have those. I also have five independent variables in the model with the different ones that I'm modeling here. So taking those things into account and also using an alpha of 0 0.05 because I don't have a huge sample size. I'm just going to go with my standard normal measure there. And I'm going to be able to take that R squared of 0 0.1819, plug that into the S squared uh, values there, and it's going to come up with an F squared of 0 0.22 repeating, which is a uh, just over a moderately sized R square, I'm sorry, effect size there. So let's plug that into the pwr.f2.test. I'm going to add in the values that I have and I'm going to leave the null power listed as null. That's going to generate for me a power value of 0 0.96, which is huge. I don't have massive numbers here, but I still have some fantastically strong power. Five independent variables is quite common in multiple regression. Oftentimes, you could have more. 94 degrees of freedom means I've got a good size sample, but it, you know, it's not gigantic, and I've only got a moderate effect size, so things are looking pretty good for me. So what's, what's the measure here? Sometimes we have lower powers. Well, let's go ahead and take one more quick look at this and say, if I only had 50 respondents, but the same other sorts of measures in my regression model, same number of independent variables, same alpha, same uh, R squared, will I get the same power? So when I go ahead and plug all of those things in, everything else the same except I'm adjusting my degrees of freedom from uh, 94 to 44, and what I end up getting is that I have a power of 0 0.6676. It has dropped dramatically. It dropped about 30% compared to when I had a degrees of freedom at 94, or essentially going from 100 to 50 on my sample size. So we can see here that the real driving determinant in the power analysis at this point 
was indeed the sample size. Unfortunately, there is a limitation with the pwr.f2.test that it doesn't lend itself well to generating power plots like we were able to do with some of the other power analysis functions. So you might want to tinker with this one at the function level a little bit to kind of see how power fluctuates. If you want to find that balance, holding constant the three other values and then adjusting sample size and power. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this uh, end of the lecture video here, and I'll see you all when we come back together on of interaction terms. But I do also real quick want to point out that congratulations, you've just covered all of the different topics that you need to do the required stuff on uh, multiple linear regression. Here forward, all of the topics are just sort of interesting, cool, and amazing things we can do to improve our model and find more interesting results. But I'll see you then.